Boris Johnson says it would be morally indefensible to keep schools in England closed because of coronavirus and has pledged to make their reopening a national priority. In a newspaper article, the Prime Minister insisted it's safe to send children back to class in September. It's also understood he wants schools to stay open, if possible, in any future local lockdowns. Scotland's pupils will return to schools this week. Here's our education editor, Branwyn Jeffries. Schools in England have been eerily quiet for months. Children missing not just lessons, but friends. Today, Boris Johnson said that must end in September, writing... Now that we know enough to reopen schools to all pupils safely, we have a moral duty to do so. Keeping our schools closed a moment longer than absolutely necessary is socially intolerable, economically unsustainable and morally indefensible. Trying to stamp out a big bug. He tried to get all primary pupils back earlier and failed. Many agree children need school. Labour says it's about making realistic plans. What the government needs to realise is that words aren't enough. They've got to provide the support and the information to schools so that heads and teachers can make the arrangements that enable children to come back safely in September. OK, lovely, come in. Schools have been given advice on reopening. It will be different when they're all back. But head teachers have been planning for months keen to get pupils back into the classroom. Many parents have been absolutely marvellous at supporting their children and supporting their learning. But I think in terms of routine and structure and systems, they desperately need to get back into some kind of routine, as do their families. Families soaking up the sunshine in Yorkshire today. After months of juggling at home, parents are turning their thoughts to school. Well, I think we should have gone back in after September, you know, at September after the holidays, but I, thought, I think it was totally pointless taking them back before, just for that short period of time. I think it's a good idea because the, uh, the break was uh, quite a big... Asking my son's opinion and he's really, really happy to go back to school in September, so if he's happy, I'm happy. In Scotland, schools will reopen this coming week. With Aberdeen in lockdown, there's a similar debate. 16-year-old Eddie knows he has to be ready for hires next year. Getting back to school, I feel that I'll be able to achieve more than in my house, but uh, definitely big con is, uh, will we be able to socially distance? That's the main thing for me, because I'm obviously living with my gran who's shielding. Every step towards normality carries some risk. Scientists will be trying to gauge the effect of each move, but in the end, deciding what matters most is down to ministers. Brown and Jeffries, BBC News. Well, let's talk to our political correspondent, Nick Early, who's at Westminster. Nick, the government's message is unequivocal on schools. If other easing of the lockdown has to be paused, so be it. Yeah, absolutely, Clive. It's just over a week since England's chief medical officer warned that we may be reaching the limit of what can be reopened, that there are trade-offs to be had in future. When one thing opens, another may have to close to make sure the virus doesn't spiral out of control. And Boris Johnson has now made his choice, making it clear in meetings in recent days that schools are the priority, that if needs be, when it comes to local lockdowns, he would rather see pubs, restaurants and shops closed than classrooms, that schools should only close again in extreme circumstances. Now, there has been criticism of the government for not doing enough to prioritise young people at the start of this crisis, for not doing more to get them back into schools before the summer holidays. But Boris Johnson has made this a key test for the government, talking about that moral duty to ensure all students are back in schools in England next month, telling nervous parents that the government now believes that the dangers of not being in school are greater than the potential harm that could be done to young people by the virus itself. Ministers have left themselves very little wriggle room on this issue, and it is now going to be a big test for the government to deliver. Mm, OK, thanks very much indeed for that, Nick. Nick Eardley there at Westminster. Well, the latest coronavirus figures show there were 1,062 new confirmed cases across the UK, excluding Northern Ireland, in the latest 24-hour period, with the average number of infections per day in the last week being 877. Eight deaths were reported today, taking the overall total in the UK to 46,574. On average, in the last week, there were 53 deaths every day. 
Okay, our health correspondent Catherine Burns is here. The infection rate's going up. Yeah, and this is numbers that the government wouldn't have wanted to see again. More than a thousand cases a day. To give you a bit of context, the last time we were at this level was about six weeks ago. June the 25th. Now the government's saying, well, look, these numbers are still relatively low compared to the start of the pandemic. And also we're testing more, so we're gonna detect more. Now, does that stand up? Well, yeah, it does to some extent, actually. On average right now, we're testing about 170,000 a day. Uh, that's about 45,000 more than the last time cases were at this kind of level. But there's a flip side to that. There are also days when we have tested way more than this and the numbers haven't gone up to this extent. So what does all this tell us? Well, really, it's too early to jump to any conclusions. All the way along through this pandemic, it's been more important to look at trends than it has been to look at one day's data. And, you know, sometimes those trends have been all too scarily clear what's going on. You know, who can forget in March when we saw those graphs of cases going up and up and up? It was very clear that cases were rising and fast. And then on the flip side, when lockdown started to work, we saw slowly but surely those graphs start to come down again. Now we're at a more uncertain time. We know that we've opened up bit by bit. Lockdown has eased. And with that, we are skirting at the edges of what we can still do and keep this virus under control. So it's going to be really key to keep an eye on those numbers and on those trends over the days and weeks ahead. And really, one last thing, if anyone would need it, this could serve as a reminder. Coronavirus is still out there. We are still vulnerable. And so we still have to protect ourselves, maintain social distancing, wear a mask, wash our hands. Mm. Okay, Catherine, thank you. Catherine Burns there.